So that's the test. Um, last Thursday, we'll go with that. Um, we finished up with this slide, and I spent like 90 seconds or 20 seconds on it, and I wanted to spend a slight bit more than this because ultimately, we'll time allow, we'll come back to these. The last couple of chapters of the semester, we'll come back and we'll revisit them in a lot more detail. But um, these are called transfer programs because income, money is being transferred. Nothing new is being created. The economy doesn't grow because of these. It's just transfer. Money is taken from one person and given to the other. So the decision of where this money is going to get spent it's getting transferred from one person to another person. And that's what these programs are about. Unemployment benefits, taking money from people who work and giving it to people who aren't working. Social Security is taking from young people and giving it to old people. Welfare is taking from people who have money, giving it to people who don't have money. Right? So y'all are being nice and or no, I'm being nice and letting your grandmother spend some of my money. Right? That's what's going on here. That's what these programs are doing. Um, I'm being nice because Preston's unemployed, you know, just, I'm being nice some of my money is going, I'm letting him spend some of my money for me, I'm letting him make that decision, the way he's collecting unemployment so, right. And so it is a transfer there. So here's the example that I all knew. My wife isn't looking, I did through a pocketbook and I nail a hundred dollar bill. Now I'm going to hit an electronics department at Walmart. My son Joseph happens to spot me doing it. He's like, did it! I go over his mouth, I sneak out the door, and I'm like, search your mouth. You can spend 20, you get $20 of it, okay? <laughs> so, if that didn't happen, the Skagos boys are walking into Walmart to spend $100, me. But because I'm making this transfer to Joseph, what's happening? I have 80, he has 20, the Skagos boys still only have $100 that's getting spent in Walmart, right? The difference there is I transferred the decision making of how part of that money is going to get spent, Joseph. And he's going to spend it that 20 differently, maybe, than I'm going to spend it. But I'm going to be buying a little bit less of what I'm going to be buying. He's going to be buying more of what he would be buying. So it's, it's a transfer. So, yeah, there's different goods and services, and we'll get into a little bit more of this next chapter. But there's different, a little bit different goods and services that are going to get bought. Because maybe he's going to be buying some mobile gum and iTunes gift cards that I wouldn't be buying. Instead, I would be buying, I don't know, another, I don't know, SD card, a DVD, something. I don't know. But Cheetos. But this, if something different is going to be bought. So it's going to be more, because he's going to buy, there's going to be more, what did I say, bubble gum and iTunes gift cards being sold. Where if I was selling it, and because of that, there's less shows in the being sold. All right, but overall, it still is a hundred dollars getting spent. That's why it's called a transfer. Okay. So, really happy. What? No, because I'm too scared to go into my wife's pocket book. Even if it is to get a hundred dollars, but she she doesn't care to notice it took five. Yes, she would notice, and, and, and Bruce is to be happy with places where, like, she's smart and they don't show, you know, kicks me in the head so the hair covers it up, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, things like that. But anyway, there is the level of love that I have for my wife, there's a level of fear that I have for my wife. And I don't know. I love my wife. She's fantastic. For me. So, and I'm not just saying that because I'm recording. Because she can think you can watch this. <laughs> so, um, so, chapter six and seven. This is what we're getting into is measuring the economy. We kind of, what we're going to be doing here is getting an idea about what the economy is, what, what, the, what are the different parts of it, which we hinted at in the last chapter, and how big it is. And I'm not going to be testing you, quizzing you on how big it is, because that's just another game number to memorize that changes the knowledge. So you don't know what the number is. I did my big slide because I'm doing something else today instead of doing that. Think about it when it does make you quizzes. But anyway. So ultimately, we're going to measure output, measure production in our economy. 
how much work is getting done. An important thing about looking at how much work is getting done and how well we're doing it is because that's going to be an indication of like how much work we're doing, how many workers we're employing. Are we going to have a bunch of people out of work? Are we going to be are we growing and employing everybody? And everybody's happy. So we're going to be looking at output. There's actually two different ways to measure the economy, and the output way is a heck of a lot easier way to do it. But uh, that's fun. So the measure we use is called gross domestic product. You English majors, break it down. What does gross mean? They don't mean you. Right? What does gross mean? Total. Total. Okay. Domestic means what? Home. Okay. Local. Product, in this case, production. Local, total local production. How much stuff did we make in our country? Within the borders of the United States. All 50 states plus Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico. How much stuff did we make? What's the total value? And we're going to measure that in terms of dollars. Because it'd be crazy for us to sit here and say, how big is the economy? Well, we made 18,000 hammers, 20,000 fingernail files. Um, that would be crazy. And we talk about the dollar value of the total amount of stuff made within the borders of our country. Those of you that are like my age, you aren't. Uh, we had GNP, gross national product, where that was looking at like Ameri how much stuff we were making. American companies were making either in the United States or outside of the United States. So, like, so the, I don't know. A Ford plant in Brazil would be counted as part of our GNP, but then the workers working at a Honda plant there in Tennessee wouldn't be counted. So, but we want to look at jobs, right, here in America. So GDP is what we use. How much work is happening within our borders? No matter who's getting the profit, how much work is getting done? That's what we're shooting for here. And we measure in terms of dollars. In given time period, well, we've ignored that every time we've had supply and demand. That phrase has been in there, but just like for the year, for the month, for the quarter, how, how long are you looking at it? Here's the fun one final output. The final product that the end user uses. We don't talk about the intermediate products, we talk about the final product because the intermediates are going to be part of the final product. We don't count the eggs because the eggs are part of the cake. Who wants to do with running the bakery if you were to go in here? I had one of you running a bakery. Oh, okay, just Matthew and Connor. Yeah, okay. Just, usually I have y'all doing like a farm or this kind of thing, be a bakery. So the eggs they buy, they're not the end you, the eggs that you and I buy that we're making breakfast with, those are, we're the end customer, we eat them. So those eggs that we buy in the grocery store would be counted as GDP. The eggs that Matthew and Connor buy are not counted in the GDP because those eggs are combined with some sugar and stuff that's turned into a cake. And that cake is counted as part of the GDP. So otherwise, we would count their eggs and then count the eggs and things that get. Cake. We would count the eggs, count the cakes, so those eggs would be counted twice, right? So we don't count them twice, so we look at what is the final output, the final product. And some things are used both as a final product and an ingredient like eggs and sugar and that kind of stuff. Um, but, we're, but we don't want to double count things, so we look at the end product. So one of the easiest ways to measure the end product is to measure what gets sold. At the end, to who, you know, because who, who, when you buy something at Walmart, you buying the end customer, end product, right? So when you buy it from the store, we're not asking what it is that Matthew O'Connor bought, we're asking how much they sell. Because that's going to be including all of the stuff that they bought as part of. So, remember our circular flow model from the last chapter? Question on next week's test? Anyway, we're going right along. Um, we had four different players there, and it was only four players. Servers, businesses, the government, and foreigners. 
So if we want to measure GDP, we're going to be looking at the activity, the buying of all of the consumers in the economy, all the businesses in the country, all the governments in the country, and all the foreign purchases in the country. And guess what? You got everything that was bought in the country, right? Because nobody left to buy anything in the country, right? Even the aliens, you know, come down with their UFOs and that kind of stuff, but they're foreigners. So we've got these four different groups that buy things in our economy. So if we can measure what they're buying, we've measured the final output of the economy. So if any of you are looking for a tattoo, here you go. C plus I plus G plus X. And you can use it as a cheap sheet like a test. Tattoo it on your heart or something like that. You put it on the bottom of your foot or something like that. It might be a little bit tough to look at during the But this is, we're measuring GDP, measuring how much everybody is buying. All the economic activity, what we're buying. Don't worry, I'm going to come back to something weird here because. C is consumption. Who's doing that? Mostly us as consumers. Somewhat businesses too, because businesses consume things, they, you know, they buy staples, that kind of stuff, and paper, that kind of stuff. Some businesses, mostly households. Investment is done mostly by businesses, but a little bit by household. But when you buy when you buy stocks on the stock market, you are not investing. So take your mind off of that one. Investing is buying tools and equipment to increase production. When you're buying stock in a company, you aren't investing. You have tools and equipment you're being bought. Nothing new is being created there. You're just taking ownership from somebody and transferring it to somebody else. But no new equipment has been bought. No new productivity has been added. In essence, you just did a fancy way of saving money when you're buying a stock. You give me money, I give you a piece of paper a little while later. You give away that piece of paper and get money in return. No tools, no equipment, nothing like that. You buy a share of Microsoft stock today, Microsoft doesn't get any money of it. You buy it from me, Microsoft didn't get any money of it. I get it, right? You bought it from me. It's like buying a used car. You buy a used Ford, Ford doesn't get any of it. Same thing so you don't get that. If you're buying tools and equipment, uh, Matthew is going to buy the truck, and he's going to write to his paper, and they're going to let it roll down the hill and kill Haley Fell. Matthew buying that truck for a business, that was an investment, right? And you'd be buying a beach house with the idea of, well, I'm going to buy it and then three years from now, if it survives all the hurricanes, I'll sell it, make some extra money. Flipping a house, that is investment. But buying stocks, buying bonds is not investing. We call it investing. They call it investing. It ain't investing. Anyway, so consumption, households and businesses, investment, mostly businesses, a little bit of households, government spending, the government, right? And then net exports. What we do is, do I have it? No. Oh, okay, I have another next one. Exports is what? Y'all remember from high school? <laughs> this is stuff we make and sell internationally. American businesses sell to non Americans. Where imports are what? The opposite. Stuff made by foreign companies that are bought by Americans. So this is the whole trade thing. If we sell a million dollars worth of stuff to foreigners and foreigners sell a million dollars worth of stuff to us, what happened? It's even stuff for stuff. The money is just a detail. But if we export more than we import, then we actually make money off the trade. If we import more than we export, we actually lose money because of trade. Because we ended up spending more on their stuff than they ended up spending on our stuff. So we factor that in, but who are these people? Foreigners, right? So remember the households, businesses, government, and foreigners? All four of those boxes are checked right here, all right? C plus I plus G plus X is how you see I plus G. And X is for net exports. If you tell me exports on a test, that is wrong. Because it's net exports, because net exports is the difference between exports and imports, right? So.
like to a nice tattoo. And is this easy to do? Is this easy to measure? Actually, it kind of is. How, household consumption. Well, we start asking, okay, Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Lowe's, how much money did y'all make selling stuff this year? Boom. That's going to be getting old. Uh, Olive Garden, Applebee's, how much money did y'all make selling food this year? We get that number relatively easy. We just have to get one number from each of these businesses. Investment, well, the government is, the, they, they're, they regulate investment and that kind of stuff. They can get that number pretty quick. A exports, they can get that pretty quick looking at this. They're monitoring what's going across borders coming in and going out so they know what's going And I would like to think that they know how much money they spent themselves. All right. So these numbers for the government are relatively easy to get. And, this, and so this is a simple addition. And it's a whole lot easier than the other way that we're going to ignore here in the US. But I meant to update these numbers and I didn't. Our GDP now is, it's over 19. Anybody with Google, whatever, can Google US GDP 2018. It it's, probably, it's probably 20 by now. I just, like, I was thinking quiz and so I didn't look it up. Um, but these numbers, relatively speaking, are going to be about the same. Our GDP may be 10% bigger than it was. Well, our consumption will be 10% bigger. Investment will be 10% bigger. Government spending will be 10% bigger. But it's, it's 18.6. No, it's 26. Okay. Two does. Okay. Uh, and they're getting 18 numbers. You can just be estimated with the 8 out of 2018. Yeah. Right. But anyway. Um, and I had the second quarter numbers, and that's why there's a slight difference between the number you said in 2016 and what mine said in 2016, because I was looking in the middle of the year. So don't worry about it. So, of the $18 billion worth of stuff getting bought here in the United States, almost 13 of it is consumption. Stuff we're buying, using, eating, carrying up, destroying. I just like what's about this. That would be an estimate for the budget. I mean, like, I mean, how would, is it steady enough to be predicted? Sort of, yeah. Well, I'm saying, well, uh, I mean, it, it, I mean we'll, we'll, we'll get to the business cycle here slightly later. Um, we'll get to it. But overall, they're looking at how much we think the economy is going to grow this year, next year, the year after that. And they're looking at sales strengths and looking at customer confidence, consumer confidence, that kind of stuff, which has been improving. And so they're, they're, they're on normal years, our growth rate is between 2 3 percent a year. But guess what? It kind of hit, I think I've mentioned this before, I, I'll get to an event that I have a slide. It has to, because our population is growing by like 2 to 3 percent a year. And so, you know, our economy has to be growing. So it's, except for like, you know, when we hit a recession, like we did in 2008, where we kind of face planted into a wall somewhere. But, you know, otherwise, you know, our growth, unless something dramatic changes and changes in the level of technology we have available to us, the aliens come and impart a bunch of tech, new technology to us, it redefines the way we do things. But as long as we keep doing things the way we've been doing things without no fundamental changes, and then we don't hit a recession because of war or something weird like that, then that growth should be fairly steady. So, almost 13 out of 18, so somebody from man that's what, 60%, something like that, is consumption. Investment is $3 trillion out of 18. That's one sixth, so that's 16%. Yeah, we'll go with that 16 uh, government spending is over three trillion, but this is as of 2016. The number does increase. Uh, probably more than its fair share now. Yep. Oh, okay. But for government spending, when a lot of times people say government, they're thinking Uncle Sam. Well, they just Uncle Sam is Aunt Virginia, Aunt Carolyn, the two Aunt Carolines who live south of here, Aunt Maryland, Aunt August could be Aunt Mary, right? Aunt California. We kind of we can't forget about them. And then for the local government, the city governments, the town councils, all of those little levels of government too. If you look, those state and local governments spend almost twice what our federal government spends money on. Yeah, we, 
That's every state combined. Yes. With every county combined. Think of every, every public combined. school. Absolutely. Yeah. Every, yeah. And, and, and that's the point of it. You add up all 50 states, all well, Puerto Rico, uh, you add up all of these local governments, that kind of stuff, and kids, they're going to add up. What does what is federal government really do? National defense. What else? What? Make it some rules, regulations, and that kind of stuff. And stuff. Running some national parks, and you know, just, but you know, and they can take money and they trickle it down and give it to the states in order for states to used to be giving people for Medicare, Medicaid, well, Medicare, Medicaid. You know. Yeah, they do Medicare, they do Social Security, but the day to day, our interaction, our government interaction is more local and state. Our police, local. Our fire department, local. Any state sponsored hospital, local. School system, local and state. Highways, local and state. Except for the interstates, I 85, I 95, 64, 81. Other than those handful of roads, that's done by the state and local. And then all the little itty bitty like local small businesses. Yeah. Um, well, the third party government. I mean, if they only do so much, how do we do it? Yeah. So, I mean, the, I, don't I mean, they do a lot of spending because they do, because they're spending for everywhere. But when you actually think about it, a lot of what, a lot of what we're doing is local. And then you think about that local government, half of local government. Okay. Here's your stock market. Half the half spending, just about the local government. It's for the school system. It's for most local governments. That's their number one thing. School system, paying for cops, fixing the roads. That's kind of pretty much it. And school system is the biggest one of those three. So, when, not this year, because this year is one of the big elections, we're voting for our, our representatives. I don't think we have a state. Do we have a state senator? Yeah. Going over? Yeah. Oh, voter. Yeah. Uh, but the. But on off year, we're like, why don't we just elect the mayor, and the sheriff, and some town council people, and ooh, we need to pay attention to them. Okay, well, forget about it. What school board people? You need to pay attention to them because the school board is spending half of the money that the county is going to be spending. So the town councils can say, well, this is how much we make, and about half of it is going to be going to the school system. So these people that elected the school system. Are going to be in charge of spending half of the money, about the same amount of money as the rest of them are going to be spending. We need to pay attention to who is going to be on those school boards as well as on those local county boards. Because, yeah, you hope it's about half. And, and it, it, that number, it's close. It's 40 percent in most small, small areas like out here. Because otherwise, what do we have going on? Throats, highways, cops, fire departments. Our fire department's volunteer, right? So, there you go. So, so you need to pay attention on those local elections too, to, because you have more interaction with them than you might realize. So, vote early, vote often. I just wanted to throw that out for my other friends for already way by the semester. Net exports back in 2016. What's going on here? We are buying more than we're selling. So our net exports is a negative number here. Can't forget that negative. We are losing money because of trade. We are losing jobs because of trade. Because they're buying less of our stuff and we're buying of our stuff. So we sell them a bunch of TVs, we buy a bunch of video games, they say, okay, well you send us all these TVs, but you still need to send more money to pay for all the video games about, but we gotta pay you more. So money is slowly leaking out of our country. Jobs are slowly leaking out of our country because we are buying more for foreigners. We are importing more if we're exporting. So if you're kind of wondering about, well, gee, I wonder what I'm going to have for a job in the next few years or something. Well, we all need to start cast an eye on buying more American, buying less imports. If you're wondering. But those of us, you know, we like our cheap socks, that kind of stuff. So then our textile company and brand you shut down because we're buying our socks from China instead of buying them from ourselves. But it's okay because it's cheap. My paycheck only goes so far. Yeah, same. You have a question. Yeah. But isn't our uh, 
net of scores will be more negative if you're not trading. Because we're not gonna have a lot of oh, no, if you're not trading, that's zero, that's zero, so that is zero. The same impact that you would have is if this was five trillion, this was five trillion, that would still be zero. The problem is when this is bigger. That's when you get a job loss, and this is the thing that President Trump has been harping about. This program, when this is bigger, we lose jobs, we lose money, we have issues. But he doesn't like that negative number. If that was a even number, perfect. To a certain extent, maybe, well, what if that was a positive number? Well, we're making money off of them. Woohoo. But then you're making life harder for them. The point of all this great thing is for everybody to get better off. Right. Well, they're making that much money from us. Yeah, yeah, that's so divided we, all over a couple hundred countries throughout the world. Yeah. Oh, I've got individual numbers for individual countries somewhere. Okay. okay. Don't start writing this. Don't start looking at this. Close your eyes. No, don't close your eyes. <laughs> um, I was measuring GDP for consumption. That's what we just did. We're looking at the size of our economy based on spending, based on demand for American products, right? Well, there's another way we can look at things. There's another way we can look at things. How would we look at it from the supply side? Start asking, instead of buying, or instead of how much did y'all sell, and how much we've got. We can look at it from the other side. Measuring GDP as income, not spending. So then we start asking, Matthew, Connor, how much money did y'all make on your business? Each week, how much money did you make on jobs? How much money did you make renting anything to anybody? How much money did you make interest on your money, your savings account, your checking account, that kind of stuff? How much money did you make illegally gambling? How much money did you make selling drugs? Preston doesn't tell me about it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll leave you alone. <laughs> Just somebody else has to step up as being the next drugging. This the other one can move to you. I'm looking at Dylan. She's like, oh no! <laughs> That's the word. That's the word. That's the word. No. No. <laughs> I did not hear this. So you can't. Uh, so, Ultimately, remember, equilibrium, balance. We ain't making it if they ain't buying it. They ain't buying it if we ain't making it. So if we measure GDP as income, we're supposed to get the same number that we're going to get with spending. Take a little bit of an asterisk, but it's going to be pretty darn close. But to measure it this way, we start, how much money did everybody make for their wages? How much interest money that y'all make on any loans that you made, on any money you have in savings account, on money markets, and all that kind of stuff. The money that you made when you do capital gains, when you bought the stock for $100, you sold that share for $120, and all that kind of uh, How much money you made renting buildings, how much money did Matthew make leasing his truck to the company that he worked for, how much profit did they make on their businesses. Don't write this down. I didn't tell y'all to add this in. Remember those net factors, those factors of production, land, labor, capital, and knowledge. What income did we get from land, our land, labor, capital, and knowledge overseas? Depreciation. That's something losing value. But when it loses value, it is an asset to accountants. I'll tell you all accounting is losing. Because well, it loses value, and if it loses value, well, you can get tax credit on it because it makes your profit look smaller so you don't have to pay as much in taxes. So depreciation, losing value is an asset. What does Indirect taxes, too. Indirect business tax examples here sales tax, excise tax, property tax, licensing fees, custom duties, all the kind of. Does this start looking like a nightmare? 
get out. C plus I plus D plus X, a whole lot easier. That's the one you can give me on the test. You just know that we can complicate things if you want to. But either way, it doesn't matter whether you're swimming downstream or swimming upstream, you're going to end up at the same spot, okay? And you're swimming in the same river, okay? But one is harder. But one is harder. One is swimming upstream and is harder. The other swimming downstream, C plus I plus D plus X. Hold on to that one. That one's your friend. I'm not going to ask you for this one on the test. That's why I told you not to write it down. But remember the circular flow model that we had and we were talking about, we had a resource market up here and households here, and we were talking about that relationship there. That's what this prep was, remember? But the nice, friendly one was when we also were talking about the goods and services for money. Remember, that's the other one. That's C plus I plus C plus X. Our friend. So, um, just in terms of your perspectives on some GDPs, these are 2017 GDP numbers. Okay, so in 2017, 20, uh, dude, 2016, our GDP was what, 18 and a half? 2017, it was 19 and a half. I don't know why I updated one slide and didn't update the other. But. Huh? Yep. But we're the biggest economy on the planet by a pretty good margin. It's shrinking. The difference is shrinking. China is catching up with us, but they ain't there yet. We're the third largest population on the planet, but we've got the largest economy on the planet. American workers are more productive. Why? Are we smarter than they are? Are we faster than they are? Are we better than they are? That's just California. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, just kind of look at California, but then that's still that part of it. But it's the, we're not smarter than that, but we're more educated than they are, right? We've got more skills, we take our skills and we merge it with what else do we have? Technology. That we have the money and the knowledge, buy the new technology to that kind of stuff to where we can hang deal with problems with machinery and that kind of stuff. So we can have, what was the example? You, you can have somebody use the $1,000 machine and they make one person can make a thousand t-shirts an hour for a machine size of pleasure, right? So that's a whole lot more productivity than other countries where the people don't have the education skill level and nobody has the money to be able to afford to buy a sewing machine the size of its pleasure, right? So we're pretty productive on the world stage, but we're third largest population and we're distant third. But we're number one for economy. Uh, the number two and three countries in, a, I mean, the first and second place countries for population are India and China. India, uh, finally, I think last year passed China as being for, yeah, maybe it's earlier this year. I mean, it's just happened. India passed China to be the largest population on the planet. So one billion. Something. Yeah, they both are over a billion now. At one point two, maybe. So, and I mean, our total, the total planet is like 7 billion. 1.2 in China, 1.2 in India. And we're not even 350 million. So we're not, we're maybe not, we're maybe a quarter the size of, in population wise, the US is maybe a quarter the size of India or China. And we're third place. So everybody else is even smaller still, right? And I don't really, I don't know the population numbers beyond the big three, but I want to say there's a pretty interesting drop off between us and fourth place when it comes to population. Uh, I want to say they're in the very teens somewhere, or we're in the mid thirties, but we're in third place. And India and China, India has been steadily marching up this list. China has been there and they've been growing. It's only been a few years since they passed. Japan, but maybe 10 years. Actually, maybe a little bit longer than that. I've been teaching this class a um, But this gap is closing. Is there mobilizing more and more of their workforce? Is more and more of their workforce getting educated? Is more and more of their. <laughs> is more and more of their labor force, their workforce, is getting education, is getting skills, is getting money. Because they're begging stuff for us. So they're getting paid actual Chinese yuan instead of getting paid the 
Well, Dad said you got a roof over your head. Mama said, "Well, here's your lunch, your food. Shut up, get back to work." Right? You, you, you're working again. Yeah. They're actually making money, and as they're making money, they're getting more opportunities, and they have money that they can spend, and they're going to be spending some of it on Chinese products, some of it on American products. This is going to be snowballing, and they're going to mean they're going to pass us. Let's see, this is what I, I don't know. I'm going to guess. Sometime between 2025 and 2030, China's going to pass on this. I don't know. Uh, Japan is third. Here in Japan, they're leaning on education technology. Germany is forward. Germany, land area is pretty decent sized country. United Kingdom is fifth. India is sixth. I can't remember who seventh was. California, if you, California broke up, it's the big one, earthquake, happened. California breaks off into the sea. California will be the eighth largest economy in the world. And yes, a few years ago, Arnold Schwarzenegger was the governor of California. The Terminator was in charge of, at that point, the 10th largest economy in the world. But you scared? <laughs> Number 10 is Canada, 11 South Korea. They're leaning on technology. Most of have to use smartphones to go from there. I mean, you got Samsung. South Korea, there. Congratulations. Uh, I mean, we have a Kia. South Korea, congratulations. Uh, there's three other cell phone companies, TV companies, and all that are there, and I can't remember that many. Mexico is 15, but they're only, only, a little over a trillion. Saudi Arabia, 684 billion. They're, what, 19th on the list? What's that money coming from? Oil. And? Oil, oil and that's pretty much it, right? So they're making a bunch of money on oil and only oil, and that's why they really care about what's going on with the international price of oil and what's going on there, because they're one trick pony. If something happened and Virginia seceded from the Union and we became the United States of Virginia, we would be 462 billion, the 28th largest economy in the world. And we're like the 10th largest state, something like that. That's not bad. Not bad, the 10th largest state would come in 28th in the world. We're 28th. No. We're 28th. We're 28th. Oh, and just for perspective, Haiti, 8.4 billion. They're yeah, not at really the bottom. They, they, they're, this number is drastically improved, but they, when you look at the bottom of the list, uh, you're down there with a bunch of little small countries that have all this thing going on here. We'll get that perspective here in the next few slides. The gap gets really small and lower and you go down. Yep. Okay, let's. Haiti. What do y'all know about Haiti? Well, didn't they have that huge earthquake? No, they had a huge earthquake. But before that, what did they have? It's an island. It's a bunch of mountains, rock, not a whole lot of good land for growing food or that kind of stuff. A bunch of people on this not the most user friendly island, and they have to grow their own food because they can't buy food from anybody because they don't have anything really that they can make that they can sell to anybody in order to make money to buy other stuff. So they kind of have been well, we're rolling, we're, we're doing it on our own because you can't, you can't buy, you ain't got money, right? So they're having to grow their own food, and it's hard for them to grow their own food. So they're working so hard to try to grow their own food that they're not able to get a whole lot of anything else accomplished. So their housing is kind of, it's called terrible. And then you had that massive earthquake that they had a few years ago that just wiped out so many houses and buildings, that kind of stuff, that it reset a whole bunch of families right back to square one again. And then you have the... Let's just say not the most enlightened government and government officials. Uh, some of them, you know, they don't mind if somebody's going to invest some money in something. They'll take some of that money, stick it in their own pockets, kind of thing. Foreign aid coming in there, they'll stick some of it in their own pockets. And so you have some of that kind of thing. So where that aid coming from? A lot of tourism. I and mean, I don't know what else they got going on there, but. I mean, they, they make you think, but it's not nothing, nothing dramatic. Per capita GDP. If you take our GDP number and divide it by the number of people, 
So you're sort of getting the how much stuff is getting the dollar value of how much stuff is getting made per person in that country on average. On average. Now you can flip that around to on average how much stuff is being bought by the people within that country. It, this is a very, very, very rough back of the envelope calculation. It is grossly inaccurate. We know it's inaccurate, but if you look at, relatively speaking, you can make some comparisons there. Just know the numbers are wrong, but if our numbers are twice as big as theirs, being incorrectly, well, if we actually had the correct numbers, then uh, our numbers are going to be twice as much as theirs. So it ain't about the number, it's about the relationship. Per capita GDP is a quick and dirty way that people can use to measure the quality of life, the standards of life of people in one country compared to another. So if we took that $19 trillion worth of stuff that we make in America, divided by 350 million of us human beings in America, you would end up with $54,360. If $54,000 worth of stuff being made for each and every one of us here in the country. But that doesn't mean that my two-year-old granddaughter is making $54,000 worth of stuff, right? She ain't building $54,000 worth of stuff. She ain't buying $54,000 worth of stuff. So I'm just saying, you all need to hide your chart first. I'm just saying. Put a password on the computer, she's on Amazon, go, oh, that's pretty. Like, 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 fight nobody. <laughs> Japan is 27th on the list. They're 36 though. The income, these numbers aren't accurate. How many of us make $54,000 a year? I will work. One day, yes. Yeah. Not now. Um, yeah, you know, me, probably, yeah. I don't know, I have to ask my wife. <laughs> Mr. No. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I just. Anyway, we're, we're actually 11th in line. There are other countries that are above us in this, and it's not because their money coming in is so high. It is how high the numerator is, how small the denominator is, right? And they're going to be like Sweden, Norway, that kind of stuff, where they're, you know, a lot, there's a lot of education there, a lot of stuff going on there, and not a whole lot of people there. So overall, the people are doing good what it is they're doing, but there ain't a whole lot of them, so the top number isn't that big. But the bottom number is pretty small. Yes. What was your definition of the What was that last slide? <laughs> Uh, the dollar value of per person on average. That's not being made. So, Japan asserts that like, these numbers aren't accurate. The average American ain't making big $4,000 a year. Stay happy. But, I didn't even touch it. That's the thing called static electricity, whatever. Uh, sort of. We're 54,000, Canada's 50,000. Those numbers are wrong, but Canada is close to us. Would you agree that the standard of living in Canada is close to ours? Can you, do you really think that there's much difference between what's going on in Canada and what's going on here in the United States? Probably Educationally, probably. we're about the same. Size-wise, Size well, yeah, we're about the same, but their population is a whole lot smaller. But weather-wise, climate-wise, the southern part of Canada, where most of the Canadians live, is very similar to the northern part of the United States there. Educationally, we're the same. Values-wise, we're the same. We speak the same language. It's, you know, it's we, part of data. You know, they just have a lot more polite about it. Right. Um, but, you know, I joke, I used to joke about Canada as being states number 51 to 57. All right. So, there ain't that much difference in us. So, our standard of living is showing up the same. It, it, I don't have most of the countries in Europe. Do we think educational in Western Europe, France, Spain, Italy, England? We think we're educationally on par with them, socially on par with them, so morally maybe on par with them. So again, what their per capita GDPs are going to be close to ours. Their standard of living is close to ours. I don't actually have those numbers on there. Saudi Arabia, ooh, you gotta take this one with a grain of salt. The average is half of what there. 
the standard of living, this is saying the average person in Saudi Arabia is living off of about half the amount of money that the average person in the United States is living off of. That one, no. This is the exception. Because who is getting the money off of where they get the money from? Oil. Who's getting the money from the oil? The, the Saud family, royal, the royal family, the house of Saud. Saudi, but it's Saudi Arabia, Saudi, Saudi, okay. Uh, then, so, 10, 10% of the population is getting 90% of the money there. But if you average it out, but in reality, no, because corruption ain't quite the word there. But all of this stuff is owned by the government. A lot of the oil processing stuff is owned by the government, or the government's got the land and they're leasing it to the foreign companies to do it, and the money is going into the pocket of the government, and who's the government but the Saudi royal family? So just whatever people, the salaries of people that work for them, or that's... Okay, you know, that one would bring us all. No, this is converting and doing a like conversion over. And we'll talk we'll talk exchange rates later this month. Mexico, the Mexican income is about a fifth of the American income. Does that seem does that surprise you? Yeah, if you if we're making ten, twelve, fifty dollars an hour, well the equivalent Mexican worker is making two, three dollars an hour. Does that shock you in any way whatsoever? When you look comparison wise, it makes sense. China, this number is improving, but China is what, one seventh, one eighth? Okay, one eighth of what we're making. <laughs> if the population is so huge, A, B, you still have a large percentage of the population that's working for no money. It ain't that they're unemployed, but they're working on a family farm, right? They are working for a business. They're uh, they're paid by being able to live. Yeah. Uh, the average average manufacturing salary in Japan is about. I mean, China is about three dollars an hour. The average. Where remember the minimum wage in America is seven and a quarter an hour. Every worker in America is making more than double the average. Manufacturing worker in China. And if the average is three and a quarter an hour, I mean, three dollars an hour there, guess what? There's a bunch of them making less than three dollars an hour, right? But you go back just a few years, that number was like two. So there has been a dramatic increase over the last few years there. The average manufacturing salary here in the United States is around like sixteen dollars an hour. Three to sixteen is about the same as seven is fifty-four. What is it? Transfer property? Whatever that is, I did. I can do math, geometry. I can do math on the left side of the roof. I can do jack squat on the right, but I, I knew what it was and wanted it. Doesn't that mean like the cost of living down there is so much that would Or is it about the same because of value? The answer is it depends. How do you define, and here's the trick how do you find living? Now, if you start looking at the price of bread versus you know, the price of bread, price of milk, that kind of stuff, there's, there's going to be some differences, but not a huge amount of differences there. Like here, to get a loaf of bread is a half hour's worth of work. Well, I mean, a gallon of milk is about a half hour's worth of work for a minimum wage worker. If there, you know, that gallon of milk might be selling for 50 cents instead of three gallon, three dollars a gallon, but they're only making three dollars. But can you make milk really sense again? No, because it's expensive, heavy, hard to do. So the, the cost of a lot of those food stuffs and stuff is larger compared to the income. But how do we define living? For them, maybe it's just food and clothes and basic shelter. For us, it's we gotta have two cars in the parking lot, we have to have internet, we have to have direct TV, we have to have a cell phone as well as our own phone. And we have internet on our phone, we have internet at the house too, right? How do you define living? So but if you just look back down to the basics, yeah, the basics food and that kind of stuff is a bigger percentage of their income for the basics of food because there's just a limit to how cheap some foods can be made. Haiti, sorry, world average is 10,000, 800, okay, 10, the world average is 
not even a fifth of what our income is here in America. India, that's what, 2%? India is working off of 2%, per, the average person in India is working off of 2% of the money per year that you and I are making. Haiti, we know these numbers are off. Even if this number was right, the average patient $824 a year. Divide that by 12. Yes. Divide that by 12. That's what? 70 something dollars. Eight cents. And if what you said about like food and stuff is true there too, then my God, they're what? Eating and that's it? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. And, and take that with a grain of salt because remember, the corrupt government and that kind yeah. of stuff going on to just $68.66. $68 a month is what Asian people are. So you, you wow. see a lot of these third world countries and that kind of stuff, and they're like eating a bowl of rice, and they have a bowl of rice, a bowl of beans for breakfast, a bowl of rice, a bowl of beans for lunch, and this is cheap. Beans and rice mixed together for supper because it's cheap, and that's what they get because that's all they got to work with. Cause you know, they, that's kind of what's going on here. If y'all are bored and looking for something to do this summer, go with Martha Reed and the group down, I think, isn't it? Haiti or Honduras, they're going to. I didn't say we were going to Honduras. Okay, it's Honduras. Okay, that, I want to, maybe she's gone to Haiti before, so maybe not. Maybe it's Honduras. Uh, she wrote some biology. Maybe it's the. Higher than I have any very bit upper level biology that year's students. Anyway, what's she doing over there? Just mission work. You know, working with the little kid, food, that kind of thing. Just for those top countries, the top 10 wow. Norway, Qatar, Macau, Switzerland, right. Denmark, Australia. Well, yeah, Australia? Just, so never isn't there college and stuff? Um, cheaper, like it doesn't the um, government help pay for a higher education there? Yeah, but that's factored in because this is the total amount of the economy. I don't think that's. But I'm just saying that people are more educated, so they can get like higher paying jobs. Well, well, yes. Well, we need well, to it is a, make a point that they are more educated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, for some of these, okay. Norway, Switzerland, Denmark, Sweden, Sweden. maybe Ireland. But I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna say that there's a greater percentage of their high school graduates going on to college and kind of thing. But overall, mountains, coastal mountains, mountainous. So there's not a whole maybe not a whole lot of agriculture, there's not a whole lot of maybe industry manufacturing kind of, so they're providing other services, that kind of stuff. They have high speed internet that would make your jaws drop to the floor. I like it. Because it's a small little country. Some of these countries are a couple size, a couple times the size of this county or something like that. So they can run high speed internet everywhere, right? So everybody's got gob stopping high speed internet because there's one set of TV stations that everybody can pick up from the antenna because it's just everybody lives close enough. And that kind of, so there's efficiency that they get from being so small and educated and focused, and they ain't trying to do everything. And they're like, we've got education, let's do things that will take advantage of that kind of thing. Go to the industries that are there. There's nobody farming wheat in Norway. I was just saying. Um, Qatar, um, oil, small country, oil. Uh, San Marino is an island in, I think it's off of Libya, maybe. I can't remember. I, I, every year I look at this, every year I look them up and I remember what they are and then I forget. So I will look it up. Uh, Macau. Y'all heard of Macau? Uh, it, in the South Pacific, it's one of the gambling destination kind of things. What's it? Uh, for the people that live in China, that have money in China, that want to do the things that they can't do in China because the Chinese government won't let them do those kind of things, they go to Macau, they go to Singapore. Okay. Was Macau like Hong Kong for a little while? It was kind of owned by China, but kind of owned by Britain too? Yeah, probably. I, yeah. It, uh, yeah, I don't know all the history. Yeah, it's, it's another one of those kind of things. Australia? Well, yeah, they got land, lots of land. These guys, lots of land, they love us. But 
and they have big bugs and snakes that will freak you out. But, but it's okay to have a snake so we can go with your shoe, eat the spiders, and stuff before you put your foot. If you go to Australia, you knock your shoe before you put it on, you go like, I'm just saying, knock your house. <laughs> but when it does settle, Australia, educationally, they're most of their education is kind of like us. They have a relatively small population there. Big country, decent sized country, but small population. Most of it is on the, most of the activities on the West Coast. Okay. Yeah, the West Coast. No. Yeah, West Coast. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> east Coast. And I'm like, that's not right. That's over there. It's on the East Coast, and I'm like, oh, I'm upside down. No problem. This is the bottom half of the So, the, the stuff's going on on the East Coast of the country. That's where the activity is it's on the East Coast, and the rest of it is just sort of out there. Kind of like China. Most of the economic activity is on the eastern seaboard of China. Uh, once a, a few years ago, it was like 10% of the world's giant cranes that used to make skyscrapers. 10% of the world's big cranes are on the east coast of China. But anyway, I just happen to know that, so I thought I would share that back with you. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody is nowhere near prepared to give you all the tests. Oh, okay. Because otherwise, it just would be three whole questions. So, so we measure the economy. Okay, we measure the economy C plus I plus G plus X. How much spending? Bless you. How much spending us households do? How much spending the government does? How much spending businesses do? How much spending partners do? How much work you and I as individuals do? How much money we make running stuff, leasing stuff, getting interest on our savings account? We come up with these GDP numbers 19 trillion. There are problems with that number. That 19.4 trillion from 2017, that number is inaccurate. It's wrong. Kind of like that per capita number is wrong, or it's kind of really awful, okay? That number is wrong, too. What? What is not getting captured properly if we're looking at consumption, investment, government spending, and export? What is not getting captured when we ask people's wages, rent, they charge, interest? First thing is there's work that's happening that people aren't getting paid for. Volunteer work. Um, Non-volunteer work that you don't get paid for, right? Um, just like my wife. Up until people choose a stay at home mom, she's homeschooling the kids. Does that work? Yeah, was she getting paid? Yeah, my paycheck. So, guess what? I wasn't getting paid, right? And between the two of us, we both are working and only one paycheck. Well, now that we bust the kids off to school, she's got a job. Okay, there we go. But otherwise, so we stay at home mom. There are people like that that are working and not getting paid for. Work is happening. Second, secondhand sale, selling used stuff. Because I sell Tyler a 73 Ford Pinto. Was anything new created there? No, there's economic activity there. But guess what? He got a car that was counted in 1973, right? It was built in 73, the work was done in 1973. Nothing new is getting created because I sell him a used car. The only thing that's created is ill will because he's going to be mad at me after a couple of days when he realized what a piece of junk car it is, right? This is 73 but we use cars, stuff being bought and sold on eBay. You know, people that make a living selling stuff off of eBay, but it ain't part of GDP because nothing is getting created. One part of it that is going to be created on the GDP is the money getting paid UPS for shipping the stuff, right? Because that's new work getting done. That is new productivity. That's new money getting spent on today's service shipping. Today's service shipping an old product. The old product ain't part of it. Number three, financial transactions. Like me passing $20 on Joseph before we walk into the door of Walmart. Nothing new is getting created. We 
we were going to go in the Scales family was going to spend hundred dollars in Walmart, and it ended up the Scales family spending hundred dollars in Walmart. It ain't like I gave Joseph twenty, now we're going to spend hundred twenty dollars in Walmart. No. So nothing new gets created there. These gifts, Social Security payments that we talked about at the beginning of class, all that kind of stuff, they don't really count toward the GDP. We look at the money that grandma is spending with her social security payment, but we don't get to pay themselves. We look at what she's spending, and because she's spending money, I'm spending a little bit less. You're spending a little bit less, right? All total, your smaller spending and her spending is equal to the spending would happen if she wouldn't get a social security check and she was spending nothing and you had more money in your pocket, right? And then the fourth one is there work getting done. People are getting paid for it, and they ain't admitting to it. Yeah. Like sometimes waitresses, like Luke being the supplier for Preston for his drug habit. Is Luke going to report to the government, yeah, I made $50,000 selling heroin last year? Uh, no. All those illegal activities that are going on aren't getting reported. We call that the underground economy. This includes the 16-year-old kid that paid most the neighbor's lawn for cash. And it was work getting done? Yeah. Money getting exchanged? Yeah. Is Junior telling the government? Yeah. Junior's like, I'm a responsible citizen and I'm going to work. No, it doesn't happen. This alone is seen as being about 10% of the GDP. That's the $5 you pay. Yes. <laughs> If you count, if they could measure and count that underground economy, our GDP would be ten percent. That number would be ten percent bigger. That's the estimate. So, at nineteen point four trillion, guess what? Uh, the ninety four four billion. Trillion. Yeah, ninety four point nineteen point four trillion. Guess what? We got about two trillion dollars worth of underground activity. Waitresses that don't they, they don't report their tips. Accurately, they sit there and it's like, but if they pay me two thirteen an hour, minimum wage is seven and a quarter an hour, so I need to tell them I got five dollars worth of five dollars worth of tips each hour, so then my five dollars worth of tips plus their two fifty whatever that's gonna make it look like I got seven and a quarter an hour. So if I make more than five dollars an hour, I'd I lie to them and say five. The I use word loosely the quote. Good managers at the stores are gonna tell their waitresses, well, you report five, five and a half, six dollars an hour average tips. You don't go less than that. Even if you make less, you don't admit to it. If you make more, you don't admit to it because you don't want to get audited by the IRS, right? That's what restaurant managers do. Are they supposed to? No. Is it legal? No. Do they do it? Yes. Probably. Do I know anybody who does it? No, so don't subpoena me. Okay? It's the same. If that kind of crap happens then all the drug activities, the prosecution, the assassination for hire, the trafficking children and all that stuff, all that's in there too. Stealing uranium and smuggling it, all that's in there too. Buying a bunch of watches, popping face off and scraping the uh, radium off of the bone and dark hands in order to try to come up with some material, make it a dirty bomb, and then you sell it. That's in there, right? Dozens. It ain't easy to be in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> they got to work there. Um, so we know the number is wrong, but as long as we measure it and count it the same way year after year after year, it ain't as important what the number is as far as where is that number going. Is it growing? Is our economy bigger this year than last year? Well, because we need it to be bigger this year than last year because we got more mouths to feed this year than last year, right? We got more workers and need jobs this year than last year, so we need the economy to grow. We know that the number, there's stuff that ain't in there. But if we keep counting it the exact same way, and if that number is growing at the rate that we need it to grow, well, we, we, we figure everything is going and we're doing okay. Right. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed through this because I don't want you to know it either, but I'm just, I'm here to I'm here to go. Two ways to calculate that GDP is income. Number one, we count the cake that Connor and Matthew did. 
The other option is to add up all of those agree, all of those things and do subtraction. What's the value of the eggs, sugar, and flour? Boom. What is the added value of the dough? They took 50 cents worth of eggs and sugar and they turned it into three dollars worth of dough, so they increased the value by 250. So 50 cents at 250, and then they turn that three dollars worth of dough. We don't write this down. They turned that three dollars in dough into a eight dollar cake. So they just added another five dollars worth of value to it, and then they turn that they decorated that cake. So they turn that eight dollar cake into a twelve dollar cake. So that added another four dollars worth of value, and then they put it in a box. And so that added another fifty cents. Okay, this kind of crap. So you can add it up each stage at a time. I was say expenses. Yes. Or you could just say, well, what's the final value, final cake? Right? Which is easier. Final value, final cake. Right? Uh, in a lot of countries, they do it this way because they tax each stage away. Here, a value added tax for the pay attention to what's going on in Europe, especially in England. They do a value added tax. That's kind of what you're looking at. How much extra value has been added in these taxes keep packing along the way, along the way. Which is better? Breaking stuff down. Which is better? Yeah, he taxes the whole cake or several. It depends on the side. It depends. It's where it's where doing it in a different way. We're sort of we're doing sales tax on cake, but then we're doing a profit tax on the company who sold the cake, and we're doing a income tax on the workers that bake the cake. So it's just a different way to. Are you swatting and fly with newspaper? Are you swatting and fly with fly swatter? You can swat the same fly similar length. So there's your fly swatting. That's important to think. Did I tell you how that went about dive bed? Is that bad joke on it? Generally, in answer to that question earlier, our overall, our economy grows about 3% a year. On average, seven years is faster, seven years is slower. We're actually having a good year this year. Uh, if we're having a good enough year, we'll get to it when we get a monetary policy. But we're having a good enough year that we're afraid things are going too fast. But the Federal Reserve is afraid things are going too fast, so they're raising interest rates. That's slow things down a little bit. Because if things go too fast, well, we end up getting inflation, and we'll talk about it in chapter eight or nine, whatever the chapter number is. Mostly faster is better, but there are people that get left behind. If the, if the train pulls out of the train station early, score. We get our destination that much sooner. Faster is better. Except for a couple people that can get to the train on time. They get screwed. So we gotta look out for that. Now remember the production possibilities curve that we had before we did, you know, baking and it. Coconuts, watermelons, goods and services. Economic growth can be seen as the outward shift in that curve. We can do more goods, more services, or more of a combination of goods and services. I'll probably have that on the next slide, but I thought I'd draw you to it. Oh, there it is. Goods and services. Now we can do more goods, more services. If we did nothing but goods, we can do this instead of that. If we did nothing but services, we can now do this instead of that. If we did some kind of combination of the two, we can now do that. All right? That's economic work. It was less and the uh, line goal. Oh, yeah, it can go backwards. Uh, if technology changes and population starts shrinking, stuff happens, it can go to the left. A uh, big one nuclear power plant you have on your island country gets destroyed in the, by a typhoon, you're going to have a backwards shift. Uh, your country falls into a massive civil war, you're going to have to shift back to the left. So, generally, populations of the rich countries, Western Europe, North America, America, Canada, Countries that are generally in the top 20 list for per capita GDP, top 30 list, those populations are growing at a slower rate than the lower edge than the rest of the world. First world countries populations grow at a slower rate than second world and third world countries. Is that surprising? Why? Because we have Oh, 
Okay, we have better action access for people. And we focus on education. But when it also maybe when on education, what did you say, Sam? People are like, well, I'm not going to have a baby today because I'm afraid of it. But <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not I'm sorry. But yeah, no, it, it, we don't think economically when we're thinking about having kids. What is it that's keeping us from having kids? We're distracted. Like education. Oh, yes. Education. For that. Thank you for taking it the next step. I was hoping we were going after kids. More educated people tend to have kids later, even within the country. The more education, the later you have kids, the fewer kids you have. Because think about those people that graduated last year, class in high school. How many of them already have kids? Moving we'll right along. Or they're going to be having a kid here in the next couple of months. A bunch of them. How many, what ends up happening? Y'all are what? I'm not having a kid because I'm in college. I'm here at Southside for a couple of years and I'm going to go off to Genie Tech or somewhere else for Genie Tech for a couple of years. And so then I'm going to be like 21, 22 when I graduate from there. And then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take a year to go ahead and find whatever job I'm going to have, move to wherever, get established, get settled, that kind of stuff. And if I did work, marry my college sweetheart, or if I didn't, then I got to find the ex some kind of stuff, right? So maybe it's going to be 20, we're going to be 23, 22, 23 before we start having kids. Well, before you get married. So then maybe we don't have kids here we're 24, 25 because we're trying to establish a career. Those people are trying to climb corporate ladder and that guy started getting your distractions, whatever kind of that's just the kind of behaviors that go on there. And then you get to the point of, well, okay, I just had my first kid when I'm 28, and I have my second kid when I'm 30. Well, I'm freaking old. I don't need any more kids. I can't chase them anymore. It's just, it's just, and it's, it don't. Anyway, I'm just saying. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of the thinking there. Where a lot of you third world countries, you know, go back to that metaphorical, you know, the you grow up living on your parents' farm, and you live in your parents' house, working on parents' farm. Right. So what employees do parents have? Their kids. So guess what? The more kids that we have, the more workers we have. I used to think that that's why my parents had, had all the videos from like cheap labor. But that video. So we'll have to talk about my letter scripting at some other point. <laughs> oh yeah, not you yeah, have good old southern home cooking. Well, my mother office decides that that's better. I'm just saying. Um, but there's a tendency for these low, for, the, for the, the second world, third world countries to have more people, more kids, and have them more often. So that, even for, if we wait until we're 25 to have our first kid, then guess what? Over the course of the, if you do that, your kids do that, your grandkids do that, your grandkids do that, guess what? You only, your family only has four generations in a century. Where, four is that. But if, on a third world country, if you, uh, if they have their kids, they their first kid like 16 or 18, or even if they did 20, then they have five generations in a century. And remember, things grow exponentially. You have two kids, they have two kids, and that's for the second generation age. You have two kids at eight and the third generation. So the educated group is going to go from two to four to eight to 16. Well, at the same time, the other group is going to go two to four to eight to 16 to 32 to 64. 64 versus 16. Right? And is there any, I mean, it's just, I mean, that's just the way it goes. Just a years difference in the group of those. Whatever that word is, but I can't, I probably used it three times. Generations. Right. So, our population growing slower. So, for that per capita GDP, I know that y'all are looking for that per capita GDP, it's GDP over population, right? This number is growing slowly. Then the gains that we have here are going to show up as a big increase per capita GDP. Because if this is growing at 2%, this is growing 3%, guess what? That's a 150% increase, right? Where if 
the GDP for another country is growing by 3%, but a population is growing by 6%, what happens? Their per capita GDP goes down. So if you want your per capita GDP number to go up, your economy has to grow faster than your population in order to get per capita GDP growth, in order to get growth in the standard of living. And that is easier to achieve for a first world country than it is for a second or third world country. Not because they're doing less work, but because of the higher, faster population growth. Are with me? Yeah. Okay, I'll shut up and let you leave. And we will not make testers. I see you.